Hi, you guys. Welcome back to the Amani Talks podcast. You're here with your host, Amani Talks, starting strong off on season three of the podcast. Oh, I'm so happy to be recording again. I missed you guys. Like, I literally have been so anxious to record back on my YouTube, feeling refreshed, feeling renewed, feeling, you know, just, just like ready, period. So child, starting off strong with what has been going on recently, let's talk about why our friendships today are not lasting. This past week, it's been, you know, accumulation of I think a, a few months, but this past week specifically, we have seen two major friendships, women friendships, and in what seems to be turmoil and just messiness, girl, because why is it the city girls, okay, and also B. Simone and her friend Megan Ashley that had the Know For Sure podcast. It just seems like relationships long, year like years long. I know B. Simone and Megan, they said that they've been friends, what, 20 years? I mean, their whole podcast was based off of their friendship. And then the City Girls, they've been friends ever since, what, high school, middle school or something like that? And just seeing women that it, it seemed like they had strong friendships, come up in success and fame and then for it to all kind of you know go go in the trash girl it's just just be torn apart and it just it makes you reflect on your own friendships it makes you reflect on your own relationships um at least it did for me it made me think like wow like are there any real friendships that actually last nowadays so i just want to start off with a verse ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 through 10 Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them fall down, one can help the other up, but pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. So the Bible really talks about really valuing friendships. Iron sharpens iron, being equally yoked in your friendships. Um, Jesus had friends, you know, um, and I think even looking at Jesus's life and the friends that he chose, his disciples and the people that he chose to be around them, they all played a purpose. And it's, it's just sad to see how we should be valuing friendships. And it seems like we see them falling apart because they aren't being valued anymore. Now, you have to admit that there are unique circumstances when it comes to these type of friendships, because JT and Carisha, Megan and B. Simone, they came up and now they came into fame. They came into celebrity. They came into people really viewing them from the outside in and really not only showing a lot of their lives, but it just has to be a lot of pressure to be friends when the fame hits. Um, it has to add a whole different element of really revealing people who they are, because even like B. Simone and, and um, Megan, we didn't really know Megan. She really played the background to B. Simone's celebrity, but we've known B. Simone for a while. So if you could have had a friendship for 20 years, but then in just a, in the past, what, they've only had their podcast for like a year, I think, um, a year or two, maybe. Um, and just now seeing how they are both getting noticed, I think that really plays a part. I think it plays a part when, if, if I'm being honest, I think the fame grows into competition, which grows into resentment. I think that's the theme of both of these relationships. Both friendships are celebrity friendships, and I think when you you know, are working closely with one another and you're kind of seeing each other, especially, I, I, in my opinion, with B. Simone and Megan's relationship, I could see tensions arising out of the pressure of it's one thing to have a private relationship and a private friendship and you and you deal with things behind closed doors but to be out in the public and then I think if I'm being honest that I could kind of see more animosity on B. Simone's part than Megan Ashley's part just from the outside looking in of course I don't know them I don't know their situation of course but just being a spectator and really seeing how both of these people reacted to them not being friends anymore because I think we got really two different um, reactions out of both of them to their friendship ending. Megan has been very quiet about it and she has done a couple podcasts in the past month and she has said very, you know, nothing disrespectful, just them growing in different directions and that's pretty much it. She has not said anything to bad mouth be Simone, slander her, not, you know, nothing. And I have not watched, I think the, uh, the latest episode of B. Simone's new podcast had just recently came out and they were saying that she was saying some stuff about Megan, but I didn't watch it. But just looking at B. Simone's, um, trailer, I guess for her new podcast that came out last week, 
it was just very shady and unnecessary to me, to be honest with you. Like how at the end there's two chairs and B. Simone's like, what's going on with this? And then they pull the other chair away. It was just kind of like, okay, B. Simone, like we know y'all not friends anymore. We know you're starting a solo podcast, but was that really necessary when you were friends with this person for 20 years? Like no one made you like that. That was you. So you would think that if you spent or invested that much time into a friendship, when it ended, you would want it to be amicable because if not, that means you spent the last 20 years being friends with somebody that was not really your friend. And I also didn't watch their podcast too much. I saw a lot of clips about it on social media and I watched it in the very beginning, like I would say the first few episodes. But as it progressed, I kind of would see kind of rumblings of, cause you know, their podcast know for sure was very God centered, God led, very about their relationship with God. And it always seemed like Megan just had more of a stronger standing in her relationship with God and just kind of uh, uh, just what one would, you know, guess at or, you know, conceive to be a stronger relationship with God in her walk. And, you know, B. Simone always kind of seemed to be on the fence, like she wanted to be all in, but she just wasn't there yet spiritually. And we all have different spiritual journeys. Like that's not, I'm not saying anything bad about either or, but that's what it seemed like it was. And I see, I kind of feel like, divisiveness with that having one friend that's all in like wanting to walk the walk and you know do whatever and then the, another friend that's kind of like waffling like on the fence I could see how that could bring up derision within the relationship but also I will say that I I do kind of feel like because it would that was kind of apparent B. Simone started to resent Megan uh that's just what it seemed like to me like even in the beginning when I was watching the first few episodes and B. Simone was talking about her ex I think she just went through a recent breakup um Megan always seemed like to to be the one that's just like okay what do you want to do like you know we can talk about it but you know what, what like you're gonna do this or you're gonna do this like you know do it and I can respect that I I feel like that's how I am a lot of times you can my friends can talk to me about anything you know they can vent to me sometimes you just need to talk like the only thing that lets you uh get over situations is just by talking about it over and over and over again like and I'm that friend that you can come and talk to me about situations over and over and over again like I will never tell you to shut up I won't tell you girl get over it I will tell you yeah girl like just vent like even if you don't need advice, you don't always want advice when you're venting to somebody, but just to be able to talk about it over and over again and get it off your chest is a form of healing. Like it lets you kind of like get tired of talking about it and time helps you heal. Um, so I'm that friend, but I'm also the kind of friend that after you vent, okay, girl, what you gonna do? And to be that kind of friend and to kind of want to steer your friend into a direction of, okay, well, Yes, you just vented, you just told us your feelings, but now what's the next step? Like, what's the next plan of action? And I think that Megan was more that friend, and I think that B. Simone kind of grew to resent that. And that just brings me into our next verse, Proverbs 27, 5 through 6. Better is open rebuke than hidden love. Wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. So basically that verse is saying, like, it's better to get tough love from a friend then get fake love from somebody who don't even care about you because you know there are a lot of people who will let you um sit in a situation they'll coddle you they won't give you tough love because they don't really care about you you have to admit that when you have a friend that's willing to give you tough love that's how you know that that's really your friend now there's a big difference between tough love and just being downright mean and insensitive we got to understand that but when it really is tough love um, that just means that that person just wants better for you. Like they want you to move past, they want you to level up and friends that will let you sit in your pity friends that will always throw you the pity party friends that will, you know, never tell you that what you're doing is wrong. You know, the first part of that verse said better is open rebuke than hidden love. So, you know, when a, when a friend is rebuking you mean, you know, they want you to turn away from whatever you're doing. You, they, they want you to turn away from that man. That's no good for you. They want you to, you know, stop being lazy. Like you talking about your dream. Okay. Let's put a business plan in, in, in some motion. That kind of friend is always the type of friend that you want in your life. I don't want people around me that are just going to yes me. I don't want people around me that are going to, I'm going to tell them what's going on and it's a negative situation and they don't try to help me to get out of that situation. I would have, I would rather have friends that look at me and it's just like, okay, you're Amani, stand up. 
Like, stand up. What you going to do? I let you sit here and vent, but what you going to do, girl? Get a plan, get a plan into action. And I kind of really feel like Megan was that friend and B. Simone was just not having it, period. And then when we talk about the city girls, another verse came to mind too. Proverbs 12, 26, the righteous choose their friends carefully. Now, it's a lot to talk about with that one. Because with JT in Miami, we kind of seen them, we saw them come up. Like, you know, Young Miami held down city girls when JT went to jail and she came out to a, a, a thriving career, okay? And I could see them coming up together and then just growing apart. I, I really see that. I don't think that they have been friends, close friends at least, for a while now. And you could just tell in interviews when JT was on Carisha Please, um, you know, just a lot of different times that it just seemed like they just weren't close friends. And I honestly feel like, JT was just more towards, okay, let's get to this money. Let's get to the rapping. Let's get to our careers. And Miami was just kind of like the, the fun girl, the party girl. Like, let's go shake our butts at the club. You know, like that just seems to be Miami's personality. And I feel like they just grew apart. Now, where that verse comes in, the righteous choose their friends wise, carefully. That is a, like, it's such a simple verse, but that says so much. The righteous choose their friends carefully. In modern times, when people are choosing friends based off aesthetic, when people are choosing friends based off of, oh, we both like to go out and drink, um, we I, I think we are seeing a rise of very surface level friendships to where people have 10, 15 friends, but are they really friends? We've gotten too used to using the term friends when we really mean acquaintance or somebody that we're friendly with. Because I can be friendly with 10 people and I could be like, hey, girl, like I have an event coming up. I'm, I'm inviting you to the event. But really having a friend that I talk to on a regular basis, I don't got to see my friend every day or talk to them every day. But talking to my friend about things that matter in my life on a regular basis and telling them things that I know will not be repeated, telling them things that I can't tell other people. That's a friend. A friend is somebody that checks up on you because they know what's going on in your life. That's a friend. And we have gotten so used to calling Sally, Jenny, Trisha a friend that we have really lost sense of what a friend really is. And because we've lost sense of how important friendships are, we don't even choose them carefully anymore. The verse says the righteous choose their friends carefully. We don't even choose friends carefully anymore. We look at a girl or I'm not going to say we because I don't. <laughs> but a lot of people will look at someone and be like, we like the same things. We, we probably like basketball, you know, we like going out. Okay. And then we never share, I don't know, our feelings about things. You never know how I stand on just a lot of things in life. Um, our friendships are very much surface level. You don't see people really going in depth with their friendships anymore. Now it's pretty much good enough that we like to both go out and, and drink and wear short skirts. Like that's what I see a lot, especially in Atlanta. You know, a lot of partying goes on here. The clubs are like its own entity, um, especially in Atlanta. Like people that that's just what it is. People will choose to be your friend based off of aesthetics and based off of very surface level things like going out every weekend. And that's also why they be making the jokes about girls be having different uh, friends at their birthday dinner every year because no one chooses their friends wisely anymore. And when I think about JT and Carisha and how it was smart, in my opinion, for JT to kind of branch off from Young Miami, especially from what we're seeing now with Young Miami being involved with all that nasty, messy, ditty stuff with the drugs and the trafficking. And, ooh, she, JT probably saw what was going on and was just like, eh dipped it in the bud like I'm not gonna be a part of that I already went to jail once <laughs> I'm not going back because of fooling around with y'all like no thank you um but just think about if she had loyalty to Miami like if they were really close friends and she would have went with whatever Miami was doing like Miami would have brought her in and JT is like entangled in that ditty mess with her like I don't I don't think that we stop and think about how our friendships really our relationships period they tailor our lives our friendships 100% tailor our experiences and our lives our outlooks on people if you befriend a weirdo by mistake a girl that's jealous of you that may you know cause you to have a negative outlook on 
future relationships and it's harder for you to make friends in the in the future with people that are actually genuine. I've had those experiences. I don't think that there is any it girl. I don't think that there is any girl who is a good looking girl that got stuff going on for her, you know, thriving in life that has not had other women want to be around them to try to copy their life. I've had it done to me several times. People want to be around you that aren't even your real friend. I've had girls be around me that didn't even like me, but you know what they did? They tried to uh, ask me, oh, you know, how can I get in with your job? Or, you know, how do you do this? Like, how do you how do you do this? They, they try to like soak up your energy. They try to take up what you're doing in life. And it's just uh, it's like that's why you have to be very careful because you never know the people that you're calling a friend, what their real motives are. The righteous choose their friends carefully. But let's just say that you don't choose your friend wisely and you have friends around you and you find out this girl is a snake like she is not really my true friend um, and you are just putting two and two together. This verse comes to mind too, 1 Corinthians 15, 33, do not be deceived, evil company corrupts good habits. So you could be somebody that's on the straight and narrow, you have nothing but genuine feelings um, and try to have genuine relationships. If you slip up and you choose the wrong friends to hang around you, evil company corrupts good morals, corrupts good habits, corrupts good beliefs. It's a lot easier for bad habits to rub off on good people than for good habits to rub off on the wrong person. Like they said, one bad apple spoils the bunch. All it takes is just one person to come into the group and spoil the whole, the whole situation. And it's a lot easier for you to rub evil and you know messiness, gossip, all these bad things off on a person than for them to influence you for the better. Have you noticed that? I've definitely noticed that. It's, it's a lot easier for somebody to go down a hill than for you to go up the hill. That's just life. So it's imperative for your livelihood, for your good habits, for your trajectory in life to choose the right people to be around you, friendships included. And even when friendships break up, like JT and Carisha, like, you know, Megan and B. Simone, you shouldn't automatically look at that as a loss because some people are not a loss. Sometimes God is clearing your path. So, you know, <laughs> me and my friends were just talking about this. When you pray and ask God to remove people from your life, why is that the quickest prayer that he always answers? I swear, that prayer be on the top of his list. As soon as you pray and ask God, please God, if this man is not my husband, remove him. Please God, if this girl is not my friend, if she got evil feelings towards me, remove her. He remove them like that. I'm telling you, he don't waste no time. I feel like God be waiting to remove these people from our lives. He just wants us to realize it first. And so when we ask him to remove these people, he be like, girl, I was just waiting on you. Poof, bye, they gone. I was just waiting on you to realize it. God already knows what's good and what's bad for us. And when we finally ask him to remove these people that are bad for us, he be like, girl, what was taking you so long? I was waiting on you. So honestly, I feel like in the case of these two relationships, I feel like it's better off that JT is not friends with Young Miami anymore. And that, I mean, we're already seeing the evidence of that with all the stuff that Young Miami got going on with Diddy. Like, nobody's going to want to work with Young Miami any anymore. She's not going to be getting any brand deals, any endorsements. Nobody's going to want to have anything to do with her or Diddy because of what's been going on. So really... You know, JT losing young, young Miami as a friend is not a loss to her. That girl's getting back on the grind, even if she got to start from square one, performing in them little clubs, performing at little venues. That's how artists get their fan base back up. If she needs to go solo and be just JT, I would support her because she was the better rapper anyway. And then also with Megan Ashley and B. Simone, I feel like that relationship tearing apart. I'm not, I, like I said, it's the outside looking in, but from where I'm sitting and the way I see things, Megan is all, is all like low key better off. Like not saying anything against B. Simone. I feel like they're both better off because they honestly were like when Megan said that they were just on different paths, that honestly seemed to be exactly what was going on. And I think that God will really bless both of their situations as long as they are 100% walking upright, you know, um, I know that Megan's um, podcast is still very much um, speaking about the word and about, you know, godliness, godliness sorry, and their relationship with God. Um, I don't really know what B. Simone's new podcast is about. I honestly don't know. But hopefully, um, I would like to see her do the same thing that she was doing with um, No For Sure, because that was such a positive podcast, and we need more of those. Like, I honestly... 
might watch more of that podcast now and just really see Megan's dynamic, you know, what, what she's doing now, because it does seem very interesting, to be honest with you. So, yeah, like you can't look at every relationship that you lose as a loss because it's not. Sometimes God is just clearing the path for something better. God knew that that girl was up to no good. He knew that that man was up to no good and he removed them so that you can shine. Sometimes that's exactly what it is. So I just want to end this segment with this verse because I feel like this, you know, wraps up everything that we've been saying. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24. One who has unreliable friends soon come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And they're obviously talking about, you know, our relationship with God. You, we have people in our lives that will let us down. I mean, that's a given. If you are putting your trust and your dependence of, of happiness and how you're going to live your life, if you're putting that in other people's hands, you will always be disappointed. People will always let you down. But when you have a true friendship and a true relationship with Jesus Christ, he will never let you down the way that your friends will, the way that your family will, the way that your, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your wife, your husband, your children. These people, they're sinful people. I mean, it's not anyone's fault. That's just the way that people are wired. So you aren't, you aren't supposed to look for your happiness and you know your 100% true companionship with other people. You should always have that dependence of um, having a friendship and relationship with God first and foremost. And then when you have that relationship with him, all these things will just be added. Like all these things will just be added to you. Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. So when you're really looking for true relationships, true friendships, um, a lot of times we as women, we pray for our husband, right? I know that that's, you know, me and my single friends will say, you know, praying for God to prepare me for my husband, you know, for me to be fulfilled before I meet my husband, you know, all these things we pray for our husbands. But how often do we pray for real relationships, real friendships? I challenge you guys, you should pray for friendships before you pray for a romantic relationship. Because when you have true friends in your corner, they're always gonna steer you right, they're always gonna want what's best for you, they're always gonna support you, and then your relationship would just be, I don't know, the, the cherry on top. But true friendships,